We'll look at Exodus chapter 4, and then we'll read verse 21. Exodus chapter 4, and then we'll read verse 21. This is a famous passage concerning about the hardening of Pharaoh's heart. And God said to Moses before Moses was going to visit Pharaoh, and this shows the uh, foreknowledge of God. It's not that God forced Pharaoh uh, for his heart to be hardened, but rather God foreknew that Pharaoh's heart would be hardened. Otherwise, if God forced it, then it's not really powerful, his foreknowledge. So God foreknows that it was going to happen without him uh, trying to force things to happen. In Exodus chapter 4, verse 21, And the Lord said unto Moses, When thou goest to return into Egypt, see that thou do all those wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thine hand. But I will harden his heart, that he shall not let the people go. You will notice right here that God says to Moses that I am going to harden Pharaoh's heart and he's not going to let the people go. Now, uh, some people, they'll mistake this passage to be, well, see, God uh, put his hand into it, which means that God actually forced those things to happen. But actually, that is not so, because if you look at chapter 3, verse 19, you don't have to turn there, but in 3, verse 19, God already said before, I'm sure that the king of Egypt's not going to let you go. No, not by a mighty hand. So even by a mighty hand, he's sure that Pharaoh's not going to let them go. But the reason why God hardened Pharaoh's heart is because God is not the type of person who'll waste it. Whatever free choice a, person's make, a person makes in his heart, whether to reject God or to be receptive to God, God's going to help you out either way. So if you're receptive, the Lord's going to convict your heart and then mold it and uh, use your heart for his glory. If you reject God in your heart, then he will harden it. He will deceive you. He will make you follow the things that your evil heart desires to do, and he'll, he's going to help you out to do that. You might say, why would God do that? The reason why is God's not going to waste anything. He's going to make sure that his hand's going to be behind everything and won't go contradictory to his plans. So basically, the basic English is this. Whatever free choice you make, God's going to make sure he'll get glory either way. Amen. That's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. Now, this passage is most famously used for preaching against hardening your heart toward God. Many people, they reject what God tells them and the preaching of the Word of God, and then they harden themselves. And it's amazing how good we are in doing that. And then there was a little bit of a flip to this, which was pretty eye-opening. I'm like wondering, why can't we do that against the devil? Why can't we do that against the world? Why can't we do that against our flesh? In other words, there's a good type of stubbornness. A bad type of stubbornness is when you're hearing the preaching of the word of God and your heart is not softened and you're not receptive to the preaching and you won't repent and you won't get right with the Lord and you won't forsake your sins because you're stubborn in your own ways. And I'm like, why can't we be like that against the devil? When the devil tries to preach at us, try to persuade and convict us to follow his whims. Why are we like blind mice and we follow it so easily? Why can't we be stubborn, huh? Why can't we say, no, I ain't going to listen to you. And then Satan is that parent, oh, please, why don't you do it? Please, I'm begging you. And you're like, no, I ain't going to fudge. I'm not going to let go. Why can't we be stubborn against this wicked, evil world? And why does this wicked, evil world blind us? Why does the lust of our flesh destroy us? And why can't we harden ourselves against the devil's system? Okay. You know, the devil tries to break us Christians, and he's probably trying to break your life with whatever temptation or trial you're going through. Why don't you be hard to break, huh? Why don't you just harden yourself? Harden your heart against the devil and say, nah. You know, you're so good with that with the Lord. One thing I don't understand is no matter how God strikes you, and when he strikes you, it's scary that you still harden yourself against God. But when the devil strikes you, you don't harden yourself against the devil. I mean, who's more fearful, God or the devil? Come on. 
I mean, uh, why do we fear the devil more than God? Why can't we have the fear of the Lord and just be stubborn against the devil and say, no, nah, get away from me. I'm going to do what I want to do for the Lord. You get off of my back. Why can't we be in total, total rebel mode, total independent mode, total stubborn mode? No, you ain't going to tell me what to do. That lust of the flesh kicks in. Nah, you ain't going to tell me what to do. Get away from me. I'm going to do what I want to do. I mean, if you're so good at doing this during preaching, okay. why don't you do that when your flesh preaches at you, huh? Amen, yeah. What's the matter with you? All right. Now, believe it or not, this sermon was very last minute, but then the Lord gave me something, and so I'm going to preach it. I think I'm going to have fun. Let's pray. Amen. <laughs> Father God, this sermon has come up at the moment because I struggle to find a message, and you know how the world, the flesh, and the devil, and a lot of things happen in our church where... Uh, it just interrupted my time. But, Father, you always provide a way. And this is a sermon you laid on my heart. So I'm gonna, just going to trust you and preach this message. Fill within me your Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father. Have our hearts softened to the Holy Spirit and hardened to the unclean spirits in this room. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The title of my message is Hard to Break. Hard to Break. Let's look at Exodus 14. Exodus chapter 14. I talked about Pharaoh's case. Let's expound this a little bit more. Pharaoh, he went through 10 plagues in Egypt. He lost his firstborn child. And he still will not let God's people go. He let them go temporarily. And then he's like, no. Nah, what did I do? I regret what I did. I'm going to harden myself against God and chase after those Jews and you know, God drowned them all out with the Red Sea. Yeah. He had to do that to finally get them out of the way. But Pharaoh, he had no fear of God. And he said, no, I don't care. I'm going to chase after the Jews, even if it destroys me. Now, what boggles our mind is after 10 plagues of God, especially your firstborn child dead, you'd say, I just want to leave it alone. Right. What made Pharaoh, and not just Pharaoh, the Egyptians, so stubborn and they insist... I don't care. I don't care. I'm going to still chase after those Jews. Well, the scripture is, scriptures are always enlightening, revelatory. Look at Exodus chapter 14. And notice what the Egyptians have a problem with. In verse 4, verse 4. And I will harden, harden Pharaoh's heart, that he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord, and they did so. Verse 5, And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people. And they said, Why have we done this, that we have let Israel go from serving us? You notice what's going on right here? God says, I'm going to have their hearts hardened again, because that way they can finally recognize my power, that I'm number one. See, the problem with the Egyptians is they have so much pride. And that's why they refused to let the Jews go, because they didn't recognize God number one. They're number one. And they're like, no, we need to get those Jews to be our slaves again. Look at these slaves getting out of the most powerful empire in Egypt. And they're laughing at us. And look how ruined our empire is. What will other kingdoms think about us? What will our enemies think about us? What do those slaves, those nobodies, those so-and-sos, who do they think they are? Man, my image, my reputation's ruined. I'm just so angry. And, you know, for our reputation's sake, because I have so much pride, and glory goes to me and not to God, I'm going to chase after those Jews. That explains the hardness of people's heart. And sadly, that's what you're going to see nowadays is no matter if God even pour out all ten plagues upon this world and God will one day open up the seven vials, sound out the seven trumpets and open seven seals of wrath, these people harden themselves and refuse to repent and change their ways for the Lord. Why? They have so much pride. They refuse to humble themselves and realize I'm a sinner. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I'm wrong, I will soften my heart and repent. Why? They have too much pride and self-image. I don't get it why you don't do that with the devil. 
You know why uh, you should harden yourself against the devil? He might pour out his ten plagues. He might pour out his wrath. And the world might charge against you. And right now your life feels like a living hell because I don't know what you're going through. But guess what? You should have so much pride in you over your testimony for Jesus Christ and say, I don't want my image ruined. And I don't want people to think that I gave up on Jesus Christ and that I messed up on that sin and they look down on me and my service for Jesus Christ. I got too much pride in me to wallow in the mud and then just let go to the devil and to the pain and to the trial, to the depression. No, sir, I got too much pride in me of my own testimony. You know, that was kind of a little bit eye-opening to me. There were many times I wanted to quit the ministry, but you know why I didn't quit? What will the th people in my church think about me? What will the enemies think about me out there? And I would go, ugh! And I would go, ugh! And I'd go, I can't do it! I got too much pride in me! Bless God! And I'm going to stick to that book! Lift up the King James Bible! Preach His Word without compromise! I got too much pride in me! I can't be kicked out even if they kick me out! You know why you can't quit? You know why you can't give in to the pain, the suffering, and the trial? Too much pride over your testimony. I'm not talking about pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall, but I'm talking about, do you pride your testimony? Okay. See, do you, are you proud of the testimony that God has given you a chance to serve him? Or do you have to find shame with that, huh? Do you find shame with it? And that's the reason why people keep falling back to their sinful addictions and repeat the same mistakes over and over again because they have no pride over their testimony. They're ashamed of their testimony. Wow. That's why they don't come back to church anymore. And that's why they, they don't care what other people say bad about them. Too much shame and they just go away and run away. What are you running away for? Get back your testimony. Take pride in your testimony. Don't you want God to say at the judgment seat of Christ, well done, thou good and faithful servant. If that's the kind of testimony you want, then take pride in it. Protect them. Protect your testimony. And don't let go to the devil. Yeah, be hardened. Man, this is a, what a sermon. I'm preaching about hardening your heart today. Yeah. What kind of a preaching is that, man? Yeah, let's be stubborn. Harden yourself. Be stubborn. And say, no, I ain't gonna budge. I ain't gonna let you go. Yeah, that flesh kicks in. Those feelings run up. Thoughts run in your mind of negativity, depression, and pain, and bitterness, and complaint. And the devil's running it amok all in your body. And then the body's saying, oh, just run away. Let go. Let go. And then you go, no, I ain't gonna let go. I ain't gonna let those people of the flesh go. I ain't gonna let go. Just like Pharaoh, I ain't gonna let God's people go. Well, don't give in to your flesh. Don't let go into it. Keep it and fight it. And fight that depression. Fight that pain. Fight that bitterness. Fight that complaint. Fight that negativity. Fight it. Don't give in to it. Don't run away. And don't let go or give in. Be stubborn. You're so good at... Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're good at being stubborn about something. You're so good at being stubborn about something. Why don't you do it for something healthy and not something unhealthy, huh? All right, Deuteronomy 2. Deuteronomy 2. You should harden your heart. You should be stubborn. Who would have, you thought you would never hear a preaching like that. Imagine telling your... Bible-believing friends, yeah, our pastor today, he preached about hardening your heart. Hallelujah, bless God! And they're going to go, what? You mean like repent about hardening your heart, right? No, 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 we got to be stubborn. we got to harden ourselves. Your pastor's a heretic. He's a cult. <laughs> they're going to think you're crazy after this. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 2 and verse 30. Deuteronomy chapter 2 and verse 30. There are some things that we should not let go we should not give in, and we got to be stubborn and say, nah, I ain't going to give in. Deuteronomy chapter 2 and verse 30. But Sihon, king of Heshbon, would not let us pass by him.
For the Lord thy God hardened his spirit and made his heart obstinate that he might deliver him into thy hand as appeareth this day. Notice that Sihon would not let the Jews pass by his borders, would not let them into his country. Why? Because, uh, because his heart was hardened and the Lord God used it where the Jews can fight against Sihon. Look at this. You know, Sihon, he refused to give in. He refused to let those Jews inside. You'll notice that the Jews were respectful to him. If you look at verse 26, And I send messengers out of the wilderness of Kedemoth unto Sihon king of Heshbon with words of peace, saying, See, those Jews were giving words of peace. They didn't want to start a war. Words of peace. Verse 27, let me pass through thy land. I will go along by the highway. I will neither turn unto the right hand nor to the left. Thou shalt sell me meat for money that I may eat and give me water for money that I may drink. Only, just only, I will pass through on my feet. And then verse 30, but Sion, king of Heshbon, would not let us pass by him. What a stubborn guy. I mean, these Jews were nice, respectful. They made a good deal with him, and they refused. Why? Because he was hardened. Why would you harden yourself? Well, it's pretty obvious. He doesn't want anybody inside his land, his territory. It's my land. It belongs to me. All this good stuff belongs to me. No, no, no. I don't want anyone to take it or invade it or, you know... Maybe dabble with it. No, no, no. Stay away. So he's filled with selfishness. He's filled with, this is mine. I'm not going to let it go. My friend, you've got a heart in your heart and have a selfishness within you by saying, no, this flesh is mine. And the flesh cannot control me. The devil cannot control me. This body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. It's my land, my property. So guess what? Depression, you're not going to make me sad. This is my body. I'm going to be happy if I want to. I'm going to go out and have fun if I want to. I'm going to read the Bible and pray, sing and shout, clean, live a clean life. Why? Because I'm just too selfish. It's mine. And then here goes that little devil there. Uh, let us pass by. We will go through. We're not gonna. We're not gonna take this out of your life. We're not gonna take your money. We're not gonna take your family. We won't take away your walk with the Lord and those precious things. And then every time people have given in to those tempters, you know what sin did? It grabbed your family. It grabbed your money. Grabbed your job. Grabbed your life. And grabbed your walk with the Lord. You know, I, they just sneak in and they said, only, let me just only, only walk through. That's what sin always does, right? The world always does. Flesh always does. Just this one little thing. It's only, what's a big deal? And no, harden your heart. Say, nah, I'm not going to let you pass by. But it's just a little thing. What's the matter with you? It's just a little. No, you're not going to step into my life. It's all mine. All mine. Let me have only one hour. Just one hour to sin. One hour for the flesh. Just one hour. No, I'm too selfish. I'm too selfish. Every single thing, every hour belongs to me, and I'm going to use it for Jesus Christ. Every day, every second, not even one single thought of evil. Get out of here. Mine, mine, mine. I got to watch out for that table. It's tempting to get on. It's all new, as you might, know, might have noticed. I don't do that every day. It just happened to be there. Are you selfish? Are you selfish? And you want, be stubborn and selfish. Every minute and second and little thought. Let me have just that one thought. No, mine. Mine. Like that. Say, it belongs to me, and I'm going to use it for Jesus Christ. But you sold it to depression. You sold it to fear. You sold it for sin. You sold it to the flesh. You sold it to jealousy, bitterness. No! Every single thing belongs to you. Own it. Possess it. Don't let it pass through your border. And finally, finally, for crying out loud, get a good night's sleep now. Because every single thing belongs to you. Don't share it with them. That's what the world does in the spirit of toleration. And share. Let's share and tolerate. Don't you tolerate sin. Don't share it with them. All right? Own it for yourself. Own it for 
yourself and say, no, I want every single right. one of it. Amen. Goes to me. Me, 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 me. Why? Because I want to use it for the Lord right. and for the Holy Spirit. How it guides and yields me. Because that's my true desire that I want to do. Well, if that's what you want to do, why don't you do it? Yeah. That's, good for you. that's your problem. See? You're a, you don't realize you are a slave to your flesh. You are a slave to the world system and the devil. Own it. Don't give a single piece to it. Look at 1 Samuel 6. 1 Samuel chapter 6. Harden your hearts. Be stubborn. Don't share a little bit and say, yeah, here you go, sin. Yeah, here you go, wrong doctrine. Yeah, here you go, uh, apostate church there. Yeah, here you go, a little bit of wrong thought there. Yeah, here you go, world and devil. No, 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 no. Own it all for yourself. Okay. Clean up everything in your house, in your television, in your phone, and what you own in your life. Clean up most of all your temple inside. Amen. Clean it all out. And take back what rightfully belongs to okay. you now. Okay. And use it for the Lord. 1 Samuel 6, 6. Wherefore then do ye harden your hearts as the Egyptians and Pharaoh hardened their hearts? When he had wrought wonderfully among them, did they not let the people go and they departed? Notice that the Philistines here, they're warning their people, uh, why are you hardening your hearts after all the things that God wonderfully did to the Egyptians? It's because of the wonders of God that the Egyptians caved in and finally let God's people go because it was just too mighty, powerful, heavy. God's wonder is so great and vast that hey. they couldn't withstand it. And the Egyptians said, I have to cave into the power of God. And that's why they let God's people go. But isn't it amazing that after the first plague, they would have been in wonder of God's power. And they should have let God's people go. But they hardened themselves. Why? It wasn't wonderful enough to them. And not only that, they were trying to seek after their own gods to make just as wonderful so that they don't get amazed by the wonder of God. So then, here we go. Aaron throws down his rod. They should have been amazed at the wonder of that staff turning to a snake. But no, they didn't because the Egyptians could do it too. Look, our God can do it too. And they cast down their rods and it became a wonderful thing. That's why they were able to harden their hearts against Moses, right. no matter what he preached. But you know who won at the end? God's wonder outdid the devils. Right. And that's why they caved in. Now, my friend, I don't understand right here. Why do you cave into a little bit of the devil's wonder? This world is too wonderful for you, right. isn't it? The way TV, internet, and Hollywood glamorizes everything. Education, work, and I don't know your current trial or situation or your struggle, but it's too heavy for you. And because of that, it's easy to cave in to what you think is a good plan from your flesh, from your mind, from self, and from what the devil's tempting you. It's so much easier, let's be honest, it's easier to sin, it's easier to follow the world than God, because sometimes the, the options that they give is too wonderful, the world, and sin. It's too wonderful, and it's too great, and it'll make life easier and better. Now, isn't God's wonders greater than the devil's? Isn't God's wonder greater than the world and the flesh? Hasn't God answered too many prayers and worked out too many things in your life that were so wonderful that you should have been hardening your hearts to the devil's wonder? Here goes the devil, throws down that staff, and then you get wondered by, wow, what a beautiful state. No, you got a great God who can just do just as good or even better. And his wonder is, outnumbers the devil, you should have sought after God's wonder, just like the Egyptians sought after their God's wonder. That's good, brother. They weren't bedazzled by the wonder that, that the Lord flashed in front of their faces. No, the Egyptians weren't bedazzled by that. Oh, wow, I worship God. No, they're like, no, my God could do better. Mm -hmm. 
And then that's why they harden their hearts. Why can't your God do better than the devil? Wait, wait. And when the devil goes, oh, ooh, here it is. You suckers go, whoa. No, you, when he throws down that staff, you should go, my God can do better. My Jehovah, the great I am that I can do better. Wow, world, wow. Job opportunity, pay raise, huh? better moving situation, huh? Clean home, right? Better environment, huh? Sin is better, isn't it? Ah, oh, that flesh, fleshly, worldly option is a better option. Ooh, you're wonderful. Yeah. My God can do better! Yeah, Harden your heart. Harden your heart and say, no, my God's wonder is far yeah. greater and vast. You know what your problem is? You're not seeking after God's wonder. Okay, okay. You let the devil bedazzle you every time. Okay. Ooh, here's a wonder. Here's a wonder. You know what the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians 2? The devil can do wonders, right. signs and wonders. When he does that to you, seek after God's wonder and yes. say, I remember that, yeah, my pain was so great, but the miracle was even greater. I remember Amen. that. I remember that I should have died a long time ago, lost those many things, but God just pulled me through. Glory to God. Made me live another day. And aren't you in amazement of God's wonder? How many times you should have dropped it, lost more things, be in greater pain, had it not been the wonder of God? Amen. And hasn't the wonder of the devil seemed so great to you with that trial and temptation that it tried to tell you, see, my wonder is better. Cave in. But because you endured and then you resisted and you trusted God, God's wonder outnumbered the devil's wonder. And he was wrong when he said, see, you're going to lose your job if you don't take the world. See, you're going to lose your relationship if you don't take the world. See, you're going to lose your great goals and plan if you don't take the world. How many times has God disproved the devil and his wonder was greater than the devil's? Amen. You forgot. You aren't sinking after God's wonder. That's your problem. So next time... The devil's Moses throws down a staff and the serpent comes out. Don't be a sucker and go, oh, yeah. wow, oh, it's so awesome. Hey, man, you got a couple rods right here. You can throw just as better. Yeah. Hey, devil, all things work together for good. See that? Yeah. Why not tell the Bible to me? See that? Jesus died for my sins. You did it. Yeah. See that? Devil got answered my prayer. See that? God worked out a miracle. You got unlimited rods, man. Yeah. Hey. Don't let the devil snake bedazzle you. Second Chronicles 36. Second Chronicles 36. Sometimes the devil's people are good at being stubborn than God's people. They knew some ways on how to be stubborn. Why can't you learn that? Why can't you learn some ways to be stubborn against the wrong things, huh? Come on. St. Chronicles chapter 36 and verse 13. This king would not repent. This king refused to get right with God. He hardened his heart so much that when God sent the judgment with Nebuchadnezzar, the king refused. He said, no, I ain't going to bow the knee to Nebuchadnezzar. I ain't going to be his servant, be his captive. St. Chronicles 36, 13. And he also rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar, who made him swear by God. But he stiffened his neck and hardened his heart from turning unto the Lord God of Israel. You know why he hardened his heart? He refused to listen because he was a rebel deep down inside. He just would not listen. From the age of five, he never listened to mommy and daddy. From the job, when every time he was given a job opportunity, he didn't listen. He said, no, I'm going to do what I want to do and did not listen to the business owners. And when he became king, he's like, no one's going to tell me what to do, not even King Nebuchadnezzar. And he hardened his heart so much that God had to break Israel, teach him a lesson, put them through 70 years of captivity so that he can teach them, see, man, you better humble yourself and get right with God. Break your stubbornness. But he didn't care because deep down inside he's a rebel. You know why the devil shouldn't get you? The flesh shouldn't get you? Because deep down inside you got a Holy Spirit that's such a big rebel and said to the flesh, you can't tell me what to do. You gotta be rebellious. You should have never listened to the devil or the flesh from the age of five when you got saved in the Holy Spirit. Okay. How long have you been saved? One year, two year, three year? You should have been rebellious ever since you got born. 
born again, a newborn child of God, you should have been so rebellious that I ain't going to listen to my old man, my old daddy, the flesh. I ain't going to listen to you. Be disrespectful. Be rude. Complain. Kick that flesh and yield to the Holy Spirit. Man, I ain't going to listen to that. Be a deep down inside a rebel. Rebel against anything the devil demands you to do. Don't read the Bible. And you should go, okay, I'll read the Bible. Yeah, yeah, come on, brother. The devil says, don't pray. It's so much hard work. Yeah. <laughs> See that soul? They're going to look down on you. Don't give that track. And you're going to shame yourself, embarrass yourself. I'll embarrass myself. Hi there. Here's a track. Get saved. Oh, you embarrass yourself. Look how you did. You just ruined yourself. I don't care. I can embarrass myself whatever I want to. Yeah, amen. And go out street preaching. Hold a sign. Be a fool. Like, embarrass yeah, yourself. Yeah. Just embarrass yourself. Yeah, Be a total rebel against your old man, your old daddy, the flesh and the devil and the world. That's good. Be a total rebel inside. And that's why you're going to harden yourself. And... The devil's going to have a hard time to break you. He tries to break you. He tries to control your life, get you back into his old, old family. But you already got a new family. That's God. God's your father. And then you're in the family of God. And then he's king and he's in control over your life. And then you chose that and then you surrender to him. And you're like, man, thank you, God. And he's a good daddy. And that daddy, he's a bad daddy. And he wants to get you back. And he's trying to manipulate. Come back. And then he tries to bribe you, you know. You know, like some of those parents, please listen to me because I'll give you a goodie. Yeah. Look at this candy, isn't it nice? If you obey me and do what I say, I will give you this nice candy. And that's what the devil's doing. Look at this little candy. Yeah. Oh, see, if you obey me, if you stop going to church, okay. if you just don't listen to that pastor anymore that's preaching you the truth, if you would just uh, go do this, you know, Go to that school, go to that job place, go to that opportunity in the world that you don't get a chance every day. Here's this little, it's a little pathetic candy, man. Why would you listen to him? It's a little pathetic candy. Don't let him bribe you. Don't let him bedazzle you. Reject it. Be total rebel mode and say, no, I got a better father who's going to give me better candy. Yeah. Yeah. Be total rebel, man. Don't let... Don't let that old family, the old father, okay. the devil, the flesh, try to bribe you, try to beat it out of you, and you get so scared, oh, I'm just terrified. I'm like, oh, that old daddy of mine, that devil, and no, 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 be total rebel mode, man. Flee to the arms of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Let him control your life. Yeah. Let him take control over your life and give in to the Lord. Don't give in to the devil. Don't give in to depression, suicide, misery, the devil, and rebelling against God. No, you got to rebel against the devil. Rebel against the world system. Rebel against what your flesh wants you to do. <clears throat> Next passage, Nehemiah, please, chapter 9. Nehemiah. And we'll look at chapter 9. If there's one thing you Americans are good at, it's being a rebel. It's being independent. It's I want to do what I want to do, and nothing's going to tell me what to do. No government, no so-and-so, no nothing. I refuse. I'm going to do what I want to do. I refuse to comply. And Well, if you're good at being a rebel, and teenagers and younger, younger generations are so good at being rebellious that they flee into sin and iniquity, I would love to see some teenagers rebellious against the world, rebellious against apostasy, yeah. rebellious against sin, and not be slaves, complying to every whim of the world, and getting them to rebel against God, and holiness and purity. Be a rebel against the world. Be a re rebel against the higher ed schools, the public schools. Be a total rebel, a jerk against that. And say, nah. Harden your heart. Harden yourself. Well, they're going to think I'm a jerk. I'm going to embarrass myself. I got to share and tolerate work on some level. No, 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 no. You know what a rebel does? Doesn't care how he looks like. 
Rosa, I don't care less what the devil thinks of me. Do you want to please the devil? I don't care what the world thinks of me. Do you want to please the world? Well, my flesh feels like, do you care about your flesh? Care less than that, man. Yes, yes. Don't care what they say. Look at Nehemiah chapter 9 and verse 29. Notice why the Jews hardened their necks and they didn't repent. <coughs> Nehemiah says at verse 29, And testifiest against them, that thou mightest bring them again unto thy law. Yet they dealt proudly and hearkened not unto thy commandments, but sinned against thy judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. And withdrew the shoulder and hardened their neck and would not hear. You know, God, he did everything he could to soften those Jews' heart, to get them to repent. Showed them his law. Gave them his commandments. Even judged them. But they sinned against all of that. And the Bible says they, with, how did they harden themselves? They withdrew the shoulder Come on. and would not hear. You know, here's that prophet of God saying, you're wrong, get right with God. And then you know what they did? Uh, you know what the Jews did? They went like, total, total stubbornness, hardening of the heart. I would like to tell you this. If, if the world, if human nature is so good at that, to harden themselves against God, why can't you do that against the devil? When the devil... Here he goes, and he's telling you, see this? The world says to you, come. And then flesh says, look, isn't this wonderful? You know what you should do? Yeah. Yeah. Amen, brother. That's what you should be doing. But no, you know what you do? It's, woo! Oh! Click! Click! Oh! Click! Oh! 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 No, no, withdraw! Withdraw the shoulder like this! Close your ears and say, nah, you don't listen. Amen. 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 What you should do? I'll tell you what you should do. Like the one brother that I ate out this morning when contemporary music goes off. You know what you should do? Yes. Amen. What sins are you talking about? I don't remember them anymore. You should sing above like a total rebel against the world's music. You know what you should do when the devil catches you something with the sight? You know what you should do? Wow, the word of God, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Man, church was fun that day. Man, that preaching was great. Wow, the Bible says this. Wow. Come back. It's boring. See, that preacher offended you that day. See, that Bible's dull. You know, these and thou, you didn't understand that. And you should go, wow, wonderful. That King James Bible is great. And then... Here goes those Greek Hebrew scholars. Now the King James Bible has an error and the original Hebrew, you should go, wow, that King James Bible is great. It's beyond my imagination. It preserved every word. I didn't realize it taught that doctrine. Total rebel mode. You ever seen those rebellious teens and it just annoys you when you try to tell them what to do and then they just go, Like that? You know what you should do? When the devil says, and the world says, huh, huh, you know what you should do? Here's my earphones right here. Yeah. That's what you should be doing, man. Have the word of God solidified around you. Fill up your ears and your heart and your mind and your, all the way to your spirit. And withdraw the shoulder. Yeah. You know, you don't turn. You always turn to them. Yeah. You don't turn it away. No, don't turn to. Turn away, man. Yeah, brother. Turn away, man. Go, yeah. no way. And then harden yourself. You know how you harden your heart? Withdraw the shoulder. You know what you need to do? Get that foot off of your bed. Get that foot off of your bedroom. Get that foot off of your house. And then get yourself to church. And then go like, ugh. go like this against the flesh. 
oh, you know, you got a busy day tomorrow, and oh, it's so miserable, and oh, you got this total rebel, man. Put on your earphones, put that music loud of hymns yeah. and the word of God, and go, yeah. And withdraw the shoulder and walk your tail to church. Amen. Yeah, heart, be so stubborn. Every time the flesh says, so opening's gonna be hard, it's a hot day. Come on, kick that dog. Those people, you know, remember those previous times you did soul winning and you embarrassed yourself? It's so hard. But you know, I don't get this. If you're so good at, in our younger generations, if we're so good to not listening to our older generations, why don't you not listen to your older generation, the old man, the flesh, and then your old daddy before the devil? Be total rebel and just don't listen to him. Plug your ears, withdraw the shoulder, and go. Say, every time the devil tells you to do something, do the opposite. Be total rebel mode. Always do the opposite of what the devil does, because he always does the opposite of what God does for some weird reason. Just do the opposite of what the devil wants you to do. Don't go to visitation because, all right, time to go to visitation. Yeah! I'm just going to displease my old man, that flesh, and I'm just going to go and serve the Lord. Look at Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 29. Proverbs 29. This is a scary verse, actually. It's a famous passage in Proverbs 29. You know why people keep falling back to the sin and they refuse to repent? They harden themselves. And you know what the Bible says in Proverbs 29.1? He that, being often reproved, hardeneth his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. Nowadays we live in a generation... And let's be honest, a lot, uh, probably all of us are guilty of this verse, right? Yeah, come on. That God constantly reproves us, he chastises us, and he's been patient yeah. for a long time with you. Yeah. But you harden your neck, and then one day it just hits you like a ton of bricks and you've been destroyed, and there's no reparation for that. No turning back now. But for some weird reason... Even if you tell the people that, you preach them that, you tell them that, people still don't care. And they're like, well, I could care less. And they just still do what they want to do. <laughs> why are we living in that generation now? I'll tell you why they're able to do that. Is because they love the thing that they want to do so much, the sin that they want to do so much, that they could care less how much pain they go through in their life. Because they're so hooked. They love it so much. And, the, and here it goes, you know, but there's no turning back. You get hooked to drugs. Man, there's no turning back. You're not going to get your body back, your mind back. Once you do that, there's no turning back with divorce. There's no turning back with abandonment of family. There's no turning back of sinning in church as a pastor and then, you know, getting your testimony back. There's just some things that cannot be repaired. But you know what? People still sin and do what they want to do. And they're so stubborn and they harden their hearts and they refuse to repent. Even if there's, if you warn them, you know, there's no second chance, no reparations. People don't care. They'll still do what they want to do. The evidence is people who reject Jesus Christ. And there's no second chance when you die, but they don't care. They're like, I could care less about hell and eternity. I got a question. People are so good at hardening themselves because they just love that sin so much. That dark thing so much. I don't understand why we can't do that for the Lord. I don't understand why we can't just love life so much. Love the Holy Spirit so much. Love that book so much. Love what is holy, pure, and what's right and truth so much that we could care less how many times the devil might beat it out of us. And you've heard that world telling you, once you walk into that church, there's no second chance of getting your job back. You can't, get, get, you can't reapply to this higher ed school again. 
You can't come back to the family. We disown you. Once you do that in your teenage years, your young childhood years for the Lord, you can't get that back and you're going to miss out your <laughs> high school prom and miss out. And those teenage years where you could have had fun with fornication and marijuana in the dorms and there's no second chance, no remedy, no repairing for that. Who could care less, man? Hey. Who cares less? Let them all go to the fury and the wrath of hell. Let it go to the abyss where it belongs. Be total rebel, no? And they say, you'll never get a second chance. Who cares about a second chance? I made my decision to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. And the devil beats it out of you, doesn't he? He beats and punishes you. The world punishes you. That flesh punishes you. See what you did? Because you just won't listen to me. See what you did? Because you won't give in to me. Why don't you give in? Why don't you give in? Harden your necks and be stubborn and say, I could care less. Well, there's no reparation, no second chance, no turning back. I could care less. You know why? You know why people can do that for sin? Because they love sin so much. They don't care if they get punished for it and if there's no second chance. Why can't we do that for God? We love Jesus so much. Yeah, we don't nice. care what the world, the flesh, or that devil tells us to do. And they'll say, you'll never get it back again. You'll lose that second chance. No, no, no. I love Jesus too much. And I'm so hooked and addicted that I cannot turn back. I'm Hang stubborn. On. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm addicted to Jesus, bless Ooh. God. Ooh. And I will keep it that way Ooh. and be stubborn that way. And if I lose a home and go homeless on the street and keep up my drug addiction of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, hey. let me run out on the streets. Let's look at Isaiah 63. Isaiah 63. Let's be stubborn today. If we're so good at being stubborn for the wrong things, why can't we be stubborn for the right things? Why can't we go no stinking way to the flesh, the world, and the devil? Isaiah 63, verse 17. You know why people harden their hearts? You know what? You notice one thing about people who harden their hearts? They have no fear of God. They have no fear of God. And even though you preach and you show them the word of God and tell them, hey, it's going to cost you your soul if you don't receive Christ for salvation. They drown it out. And they say, why do you talk about hell? You're so offensive. You should never talk about hell. Your preacher's preaching against sin, and then people go, why do you have to talk about that stuff? And they get offended and mad, and they get stubborn. They don't want to hear it. Why? Because they don't want to be reminded to fear God. They think it's so scary. It's all about love and toleration. And that's why they harden their hearts and do what they want to do. Because they have no fear of God. Look at Isaiah 63, 17. The word of God reads... O Lord, why hast thou made us to err from thy ways? And harden our heart from thy fear. Return for thy servant's sake the tribes of thine inheritance. O oh, to God, we would have the fear of the Lord so that we don't harden ourselves and yield to the Holy Spirit, right? Oh, that we wouldn't harden our hearts and the fear of the Lord is a valuable thing. But you know what's amazing? I think that the fear of the world... The fear of our Come flesh, on. Come on, brother. the fear of the devil seems to triumph more than the fear of the Lord. And because the devil is so fearful, and you go, man, that trial is so tough. No, I can't endure it. I want to run away from that. I want to get away from that. I cannot resist that pain and that struggle. Why? Because the devil is so fearful. Goliath is too great. I'm so scared. No, 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 no. You gotta hold in your heart. You gotta lose your fear of the devil, lose your fear of yeah. the flesh and the world, and then you gotta go, come on, Goliath. Yeah, come on. Amen. But Goliath is so big. Doesn't it hurt? Doesn't it? No. I mean, if you're so good with that with the Lord when he beats the fire out of you, I don't know why you can't do that against the devil. Good preaching, brother. 
You go, you know what people do nowadays? They drown out. They don't want to hear about hell and they don't want to hear about the judgment of their sins so that they can lose their fear of God. Why don't you drown out what the devil tells you? You know, you're going to lose this. You're going to lose that. His fear. And then say, drown it all out. Get offended. Get offended by that. And say, how dare you? Why don't you shut your stinking mouth, man? How dare you take away my joy in the Holy Spirit when I found brothers and sisters in Christ here, when I found a good relationship, when I found a good family, physical and spiritual, and I found, most of all, salvation in Jesus Christ. How dare you? Get out of my house. Be offended. Be offended. When the devil comes in and then tries to make you fearful about his version of hell and his version of fear. And, and then he's trying to say, see, if you don't do this, this bad thing's going to happen. Why don't you fear me? No, ignore him. Be offended. Walk out. Amen. If you're so good at ignoring the fear of the Lord, you should do the same with your flesh and the world and the devil. Be in total ignorance mode, a total ignoramus against what the flesh puts out to you if you don't take that job, if you don't do this thing, and if you don't rebel against God, and if you, uh, if you stop, if you would only stop praying and do this thing, and they might say it's worldly, secular, or, you know, not following the will of God. If you don't do this, you're going to lose everything. You're going to be miserable and sad. And then, you know, we live in a day and age where Christians cower, and they go, you're right. Oh, oh, oh. And that's why they give in to their flesh, the prison of their flesh, the prison of the world, and the prison of the devil. Have some fear of God, not the fear of the devil. Have a total ignoramus of the fear of the world, flesh, and devil. My next passage, I want you to go to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews. Chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3. I would like some spiritual, godly pharaohs today, if that makes any sense. We need some holy, pure pharaohs today who will not let go into the flesh, the world, and the devil and say, No. No. Who is this? Satan that I must obey? Who is this flesh that I must obey? Who is this world and who Hollywood, higher ed and the glamour of the world, the treasures, look, look, look. No, who is this world that I must obey? I will not give in, neither will I let and go to the flesh, the world and the devil. No! Harden your heart. Be stubborn. Look at Hebrews. Chapter 3 and verse 15. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 15. These Jews, they had a lot of, uh, how dare they did do this to God? Didn't they have the fear of the Lord? Especially after he drowned out the Egyptians. But they hardened their heart, did not listen to God, and that's why they got overthrown in the wilderness. Hebrews 3, 15. They provoked God. Hebrews 3.15, while it is said, today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. Yeah. Oh, they provoked God. Oh, what did they provoke him? Or some, when they had heard, did provoke. Howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. <laughs> they provoked the Lord. You know what they were doing? Can God really provide us food out here in the wilderness? Is God really that great that he can take good care of us? That's why they harden their hearts. Now, I don't know why you can't do that with the world, the flesh, and the devil. That's right, brother. When that job opportunity comes that gives you six-digit figure salary or whatever, and your future's all planned out, your retirement plan, 401k, and the worldly options out there, I don't know why you can't just provoke the world and say, what good is that thing going to do to me? What good are those riches going to do in my life? And you should complain. You should complain about the world, the flesh, and the devil. You should complain every single time you yield into the sin of that flesh and go, man, this don't satisfy me. 
Man, this is just miserable. Man, you know, uh, it didn't give me that joy that I wanted. Sure, it gave me some hype, but it didn't go really high and it didn't go that long. And I don't know why, Flesh, I keep listening to you. Are you really that great? Are you really that powerful? Complain and provoke the world, the flesh, and the devil. And that way you can harden your heart against its temptations and its allures. And when trial trial and suffering is so great and depression seems the easier way and then com and then bitterness seems to be the easier way and then your own plan rather than God's plan seems to be the easier way because that trial is so great provoke that trial and said I don't know what getting sad and committing suicide did okay. good for me okay. I don't know why uh, you know just crying in my bedroom all day did any good for me I don't know what I did by giving into alcohol and drugs to Take away this pain did any good for me. It don't do a lick of good. Why am I wasting money on that? Good, precious money on that. Complain and provoke the world, the flesh, and the devil. Yeah. You're so good at complaining about the things of God. It's about time God's people complained about the things of the world, man. Yeah. Complained about the things of the flesh, man. Complain the things about the devil, of that suffering and that trial. Just complain about those things. That's good. Don't give in to that. Provoke it. Provoke it. All right, go to Acts 19. I'm done. Acts 19. Oh, to God, we would have some Christians who would harden their hearts against the flesh, against sin, against evil, impurity, and the riches of this world. Oh, that we would have some stubborn Christians today who would not compromise, who would not budge, and not give an inch to it. In Acts chapter 19 and verse 9. <clears throat> but when divers were hardened and believed not, but spake evil of that way before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus. Now notice right here that these poor souls hardened themselves, would not listen to Paul, and they even spoke evil of him. That's real sad. That's why they rejected Christ and then, God forbid, they died and went to hell. What made them harden? It was the preaching. Look at verse 8. <clears throat> and he went into the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. But when divers were hardened. That's why they got hardened, because they hated the preaching, the persuasion of Paul. God is not the only person who can preach good. The devil shall, can sure preach a good sermon. And he can persuade you. He's the best in apologetics. And that devil is persuasive in his preaching. Right? Every day, you listen to the sermon from the devil more than the preaching of the word of God. You come Sunday... Your heart gets softened to the preaching of the word of God. But come Monday, you listen to the preaching from that wicked old flesh. And Tuesday, the preaching of that wicked old flesh. And Wednesday, that wicked old flesh keeps preaching at you. And you're that person sitting so faithfully in the church of Satan. And in that church of Satan, that flesh preaches at you. And then you go on that altar and give in to that flesh so many times and say, Oh, forgive me. Satan and flesh, I'll do what you want to do. I'll get into depression. I'll get into bitterness. I'll get into suicide. I'll get into the winds and the waves of the flesh. I will fulfill your desires. Oh, God, flesh, I worship you. You've done that faithfully every day. And then Sunday, you're serving two masters. Oh, man. You know what you should be doing? You sh when you hear that preaching, you should be hardening your heart against the preaching from the flesh yeah. and the persuasion of that flesh. And when that flesh goes Rabbi Zacharias mode and apologetic and speaks so persuasively to you on television, on internet, and CNN, because whatever they display is always true. Yeah. And then MSNBC, and yes, even Fox News at times, and yeah. your worldly friends are very persuasive. They know what they do. They know what they're talking about. 
They're good, great, awakening, revival preachers, my worldly friends. And, you know, those public school teachers, they got degrees behind them. So persuasive. And, you know, I found fellow apostate Christians, too. Fellow saved brothers and sisters in Christ. And they told me that, you know, the church and the way I'm living is too extreme. And to go listen to their preaching. Amen. Reject it. Harden your heart. And not only that, you should walk out of their preaching yeah. and verse 9, speak evil of them. Yeah. You know what? They are evil. Yeah. We're all good and evil. Yeah. That persuasion is death. That persuasion that which you give me is destruction. Yeah. It's temporary. Dissatisfied. Speak evil. You know what you should do? You're going to go to church. The church of Satan. Your flesh will be your preacher. Come Monday. Bless God when Monday comes. I want you to reject that preaching. Walk out those doors of that church of Satan and speak evil of that flesh. That flesh is rotten. That flesh is cruel. Yeah. That flesh yeah. can be no good. And God is good. God is holy. God is merciful. Yeah. God is great. Yeah. Come on. Let's go to church. Yeah. Every head bow and every eye shut. Amen. Amen. Some of you Get ready, you're going to walk into that church of Satan tomorrow and the flesh will be your preacher and sin will be your Holy Spirit to convict you. Get ready to walk out of that church. I want you to walk out of that church service and speak evil of them. Yeah. Every time that flesh preaches at you, speak evil of the flesh. When the flesh says, there's just no other way around it but to just end your life. When that flesh is preaching at you, speak evil of it. Say, no, you just want me to end God's better plan for me in the future. You just want to rob and destroy my life. Every time that flesh preaches at you, you speak evil of that thing. At the same time, same time that temptation comes, you need, need to be in the habit of speaking evil of that temptation. And say, you're fake. And you're not real. And your satisfaction is temporary. You're dissatisfied. You're trying to trick me and lie to me. Speak evil. Speak evil of that preaching of the flesh and the world and the devil. Speak evil. Because they are evil. Every description you give to them, they mean it up. It's true what you said, the evil things about them. Don't be scared to offend and hurt that preacher's feelings. No, be bold and say, you're evil. You're false. And you're a lie. I am not going to walk into your church again. Say that to your flesh. Say that to the church of Satan. Oh, how sad though that today that God's people have done that with God's church. With the man of God that God has given to them to preach at them. And they're bold enough. And how dare they say, you're fake. You're a false prophet. You're not real. You don't know what you're talking about. How dare God's people do that with the things of God today. And the people of God today. Rather than the things of the devil and the people of the devil. How dare. How dare people do that. Let's harden ourselves today and let the devil have a hard time breaking you. Let that world have a hard time breaking you. Be hard to break, harden your heart, and be so stubborn that you ain't going to budge from where God called you to be and where God wants you to do. Stay right where you are. Don't budge from your seat. Don't come to their altar call. Stay glued into your seat and put a frown on that face and be stubborn and close your ears against the preaching of that flesh. Don't you dare give in. Don't give in to their altar call. I want people, I want some people today to be stubborn today as they are in the altar right now, confessing their sin, repenting, and committing their lives. I want some people to be stubborn today and say, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna budge and I am going to forsake all these wicked things 
I ain't gonna listen to that flesh and that world and that devil out there. I don't know what trial you're going through and I don't know what temptation you're going through, but guess what? You can be stubborn against them, be total rebel mode and just reject them and disobey them. You are not their slave, you are not their captive. You are free in Jesus Christ. I made my decision to follow Jesus. And guess what? No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back. No turning back. Let's close with a word of prayer. Father, I pray that people have not hardened their hearts to this preaching. I pray they soften themselves to the preaching of your word. They didn't get offended by this preaching, but they hearkened to your word. I pray that they got offended every ounce to that flesh, to that temptation. And those lies of the devil and from that wicked world, I pray they got fully offended by them and that they made their decision to harden themselves and they won't let that world, that flesh, that devil break them as easily as before. Harden our hearts, Heavenly Father, to the things of evil and sin and what displeases you. Help us to harden ourselves and not turn back but to soften our hearts to your ways, to how the Holy Spirit leads. Be so soft, be so tender, and listen deeply to that still small voice. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen.